Piet Tretief was a voortrekker leader who was part of a very significant period in South African history. He was brutally murdered in a cowardly way, which set into motion the build-up to another event which is remembered every year on the 16th of December by the Buddha Nation. This event was the Battle of Blood River, where yet again the tactics of betrayal was used in an attempt to wipe out the people of Retief. The impact of these events are still felt today in 2018, even though most people do not keep the event itself in their daily thoughts. It is a story of faith and the unwavering belief in God and relying on Him to deliver His people. The Buddha was supposed to be wiped out often during history, but God has interceded each time to ensure that these people who confess Him as their leader are not destroyed. We find ourselves again today where people are singing that they will kill the Buddha, try to destroy the culture or remove the history of this nation. We are therefore looking back into our history today to first remember and secondly understand how we ended up in this difficult position as a Buddha nation. We are once again standing before the same choices which Pitratif and Dengan had. Who were the people of this seemingly naive leader whose actions led to one of the most dramatic battles recorded on the African continent? Latif was born to Jacobus and Deborah Latif on 12 November 1780. He was born on their farm Wagenmakersverlei in the then Cape Colony, which is today the town of Wellington. His great grandfather, Francois Retif, was an immigrant from France or better put, a refugee commonly referred to as a Huguenot. Francois Retief arrived in the Cape Colony in 1689. The Huguenots originated in France from a group of people who were part of the 16th century Protestant Reformation. They were believers who belonged to the Reformed Church of France. It is interesting that the number of this group of people, which so little is known of in our current culture, reached an estimated 2 million people by the time of 1562. The Huguenots became more prominent in the Kingdom of France and this caused the hostility from the Catholics to grow towards them. The French Wars of Religion, which occurred between 1562 to 1598, ended with the issue of the Edict of Nantes. This edict gave the Huguenots political and secular autonomy. The Huguenot Rebellion of the 1620s resulted in the loss of these privileges, making their life very difficult. Louis XIV finally issued the Edict of Fontainebleau in 1685, which removed the recognition of Protestants in France. The Huguenots were left with a choice, convert to Catholicism or find a new place to live out their belief. It was the actions through this period which caused Francois Retief to flee from Provence, France to the Cape Colony. Young Peter Tief worked on his family farm with his nine siblings. He moved to the area of Stellenbosch at the age of 27, where he tried several business ventures with mixed results. He started out as a store clerk and then prospected with land and also ran a liquor business. Colonel Thomas Wilshire put a stop to this business due to his unhappiness with his soldiers always being drunk. Magdalene Greilin, a widow at the time, became his wife in 1814 and he adopted her three sons and two daughters in the process. He was educated and was also involved in the commandos which defended the Buddha people. His strong character, refinement, intelligence and honesty made him popular within the Voortrekker movement. This led him to become spokesperson for the group due to his strong character and honesty. His drive as leader led to that fateful day of 6 February 1838. Retief bought a farm near the Kucha River before ending up in the town of Grahamstown. He was forced to start farming again after losing the fortune he had made in a bad business deal. It was also the time when the Cape became a British colony. The Buddha were directly affected by the change of governance and the way the colony was managed. English became the official language, which made it difficult for the Buddha to use their own language, which is central to the Buddha until this day. 
the Anglican Church was made the official state religion, and the strong Dutch Reformed sentiment was in contradiction to the Anglican belief. The legal system was also changed, which caused much controversy. The result was that many Buddha people lost their livelihood and it created unhappiness. Ratif became the leader of this disenfranchised group of people. An attempt was made to have talks between the farmers and the British authorities, with Ratif serving as the mediator. The talks failed and resulted in the Great Track. Ratif published the manifesto for the group on 22nd January 1837 in the Grahamstown Journal. He explained he wanted to lead his people to a place with prospects for peace and happiness for their children, and to do this with resoluteness, to apply the principle of true freedom which will be esteemed, and to have a government with proper laws based on the fundamental concepts of righteousness. This was intended to be a declaration of independence for the Voortrekker farmers. His group joined with another group of 300 Voortrekkers in Tabancho. The group elected him as governor of this temporary settlement, since they had their eyes on the more fertile ground in Zululand. Pitratif wrote a letter addressed to Dengan, the then leader of the Zulus. Pitratif also mentioned the defeat of King Mzlikazi to encourage Tengan to reconsider attacking the Voortrekkers. Dengan stated in secret that he was not happy to share the land. He decided to send Ratif on a mission which was believed to be a test to determine the military strength of Ratif. He was asked to retrieve cattle from a chief called Sekonyale. The condition was for the cattle to be returned to get land from Dengan. The effort was a success and Dengan realized he could not attack the Voortrekkers directly. Dengan was paranoid that the Voortrekkers will attack him, which was made worse when he saw Pitratif's men moving closer to Inkandla, a Zulu royal homestead. All these factors increased the mistrust from Dengan to the Voortrekkers, which he saw as dangerous intruders. He was convinced the Voortrekkers are preparing to attack him. I wonder how big the fear must have been that about 400 men could attack a camp with tens of thousands of people. Dengan made up his mind to kill Pitratif and his men. Ratif and his men were invited to a celebration to celebrate the return of the cattle. Dengan requested they leave their weapons outside the club. On 6 February 1838, once they were all inside the crawl, they were attacked and killed by Dengan's followers. <laughs>